SZA, one of my favorite alternative R&B artists that I wanted to show some love to in this video. Each and every one of her bodies of work has an immense amount of calculation behind it, making sure that it's going to be some of the highest pieces of quality music you'll ever hear in your life. Every time she releases something, you already know that it's going to have me levitating higher than a cumulo nimbus cloud. I noticed recently on my channel that I've been mainly abiding by a strict category of music, rap, which is a great thing, but I also wanted to show y'all that that's not all I listen to, and maybe cater towards a string of different artists of various genres, which is why my last ranking was on Frank Ocean. And to all my hip-hop fans, don't you worry your sweet little head, I'll get to your artist soon enough, that's why you gotta subscribe and stick around to eventually see my opinion on J. Cole, Jid, Drake, and so much more y'all, just be patient with me. But anyways, despite SZA being on top of the game right now, she only really has five core projects, three of which are like mixtape EPs, and the latter two are official studio albums. But let's get into the list. Starting with Dead Last, we have The Odyssey. This is just an interlude. Its duration is mostly taken up by Eartha Kid talking about relationships. And when it's the actual part of the song, the melody is pretty simple and relatively comforting. It's all right, but nothing I want to go back to and actively listen to. Babylon. A lot of what I don't like about this song is unfortunately what many other people do like about this song, that of which being the beat. It's sampled from Lupe Fiasco's Bone Babylon remix, and I just find it to be very off-putting. It's not a pleasant listen for me. Kendrick is fine on it, apparently he did his feature without SZA even knowing, but yeah, it's a skip for me. Sorry, coach. Kismet is also just a whole load of nothing, but it's really cool to see the earlier ideas she had in her career flesh out into songs that I love now on Control, like how she incorporates little voice clips and audio recordings to tell a narrative. Time Travel Undone. The driving hi-hats from Top Notch's production kind of throw everything off for me. Pray. This one feels like I'm lost in a magical forest filled with mythical creatures like fairies and stuff, but lost in like a bad way where I'm desperately trying to find my way out but can't. Wavy interlude. Even though this track is only one minute long, I never find myself finishing it because the air horn at the beginning always turns off my desire to listen to the rest. And it's really SZA that makes the song. I'm not a huge fan of James Fontelroy's performance or however you say his last name. <laughs> Castles reads as an exploration of oneself and what it means to mature and endure all the changes life throws at her. The production is pretty, but beyond that, it doesn't really give you a whole lot to digest sonically. Pennies, Public service announcement. Bruh, this got me so hyped before SOS came out. Julia is inspired by the film Pretty Woman, directly naming itself after Julia Roberts. It's flashy, and I can honestly see it fit pretty well in the background of the Barbie movie or something. 2AM is chill. It ain't much, but it's just chill. She's basically talking from the point of view of a side chick that's too attracted to bounce. It's too bad I don't include unreleased tracks, because if I did, I would have talked about Inside Man, which plays for a little at the end of this one. Sweet November directly samples production from Marvin Gaye. It doesn't really have much to say, but it's smooth and is really cool. Joni is like a trap outtake from SOS. I don't know if she's going to do a deluxe version like she did with Control five years later with like Boy from South Detroit, but I'm including this one anyways. I didn't listen to Aftermath like right when it came out, but it has such a nostalgic touch to it that it feels like I did. Ice Moon makes me want to go out and touch some grass, but I can't because I gotta finish this video. Green Mile is a grander sounding track on Z talking about a transition from life to death, like the last walk inmates make before getting executed. I'm mixed on how I feel about it because it does sound good, but the chorus gets old pretty quickly. Hijack. Produced by Tori Moi, this is Sis's contribution to TDE's high power thing they had going on a little bit ago. Advil has SZA flexing her soothing vocals, melodically singing about some substances, substituting her use of taking Advil. I just spit some bars. Terror Dome bars a clip from Roman Polanski's Rosemary's Baby, and that's all I have to say about it. Wings goes hard. Sometimes I wonder, if she has two mixtapes titled S and Z, then where's A at? For the first SOS song on the list, we got the title track, SOS. A cool little opener, but the weakest on the album, in my opinion. You are. or you are Another cool little opener. Garden Say It Like That. This one's cool. I mean, it's just another cool little song. A lot of reverb on it, you know. Smoking on my X-Pack. This and SOS were produced by VJ Versace. I used to watch this guy's Vines compilations constantly when I was younger. I'm so proud of what he's become. Hit different. 
love Pharrell's production and Ty Dolla Sign's contribution, but I mean, it can get kind of old kind of fast. I don't want to keep repeating myself, but it's the truth. Percolator. This one's calm. Ooh. Bed is such a euphoric sounding hidden gem. Once Upon a High. Honestly, this entire EP is just a hidden gem. I like it more than S if I'm being quite frank. Notice Me is a pretty poppy song with some killer kicks in it, talking about prioritizing actual love in a relationship over, you know, woo-hooing. I like it. 20-something. Something. All right, I'm not going to lie to you guys. For the longest time, I've been a 20-something hater. I've always appreciated the message and still do about the overwhelming emotions that come with change in life. It's basically a song encapsulating a midlife crisis. But sonically, I always found it to be quite boring. Up until recently when I started working on this video, I finally realized that it's actually kind of genius. So don't hate because it's ranked so low. Appreciate it for not even being lower. Country. This sounds like an early version of Good Days. It's so good. Days. Omega is, I guess, this is a way of repenting of her sins or something. I don't really know. I, this one seems pretty religious, but I like the way it sounds in my ears. Breaking into the top 40 SZA songs, we have this little number, Jody. Taken out of the deluxe version of Control, if the beat sounds a little familiar, that's because it was produced by Tyler, the creator. You learned something new. Miles has an addicting sound that I like going back to every now and then for a nice short tune. Shattered Ring is like a better version of Wings. For the most part, I honestly believe her music has been progressively getting better after each album. Euphraxia is a super strong highlight off Cease as a run. But I have to say Crack Dreams is a better one though. It's catchy and really shows that she never lacked in quality when it came to putting out some bangers. Child's Play has SZA and Chance the Rapper take a look back on their youth and remember simpler times. I mean, I personally never really played with Barbie or Street Fighter, but I did do a lot of cool math games and watch a lot of Stampy too, so I get you, SZA. Conceited. I looked at this word for way too long and now it looks super weird. I need to take my eyes off of it. Conceited. Open arms. Travis's verse did take a little bit to grow on me, but now I'd be singing along word for word. Crazy enough, I don't think Pretty Little Birds isn't even SZA and Isaiah Rashad's best collab. You'll see what I have over it, but this one's still great. Love Language samples her own song hit different, a bunch of placements below. It's yet again, if you couldn't tell, another love song. I Hate You was a long-awaited leak to have finally been released as a single for SOS. I vividly remember listening to it the day it came out while working a shift at Marshall's cleaning up the men's section. Far delves into a lot of different subjects, like rejection and feeling burned out. She feels far from who she once was, and I feel far from finishing this Drake video I've been cooking up for a minute. Tread Carefully is a great song. That, that's all I gotta say. Snooze really seems to be a fan favorite right now. It's one of her most popular and trending songs at the moment, and I can totally see why. Too Late asks the question, is it too late? The Weeknd. The little outro to this song is so good. The very, very beginning of Low really sounds like backup vocals from Playboy Cardi to me. I, I don't, I, I low-key might just be going crazy, but the song is fire too. Supermodel. supermodel. What an intro. It starts with her mom talking and ends with Pharrell whispering. The whole thing talks about her insecurities and getting back with her ex. It all sounds so hypnotic. Used. Don Tolliver's part is so infectious. Love Galore. I was initially going to say that this was her and Travis's first collab, but I decided to do the tiniest bit of research and found out that that's entirely wrong. I had no idea that was Cezanne okay all right, but anyways, this is good. F2F seems to be a mixed bag for a lot of people, and I can totally understand that. Even a few of my friends who are huge fans of Cezanne were like, oh, nah, nah, turn this off when first hearing it. It's a mix... It's like a mix of country at the beginning and rock during the middle. It's kind of random in the track list too, but I love it. I think the beat drop goes absolutely mad. I don't relate to the anthem at all, but I do really like it. Warm Winds. 
Overall, I think Z is a pretty okay EP. To me, half the songs I don't care about at all, but the other half is pretty alright, and this singular track is easily leagues better than the rest. The first part sounds like I'm playing Papers, Please, and the second is just awesome, with Sizz and Isaiah Rashad performing a killer duo. Love this one. SZA heard this gorgeous instrumental to blind and first thought to sing this? Shirt hits. Anything was a song I overlooked for the longest time, but revisiting this one truly showed me that even her hidden gems are sometimes better than her major bangers. Go Gina. Go on girl. Prom fittingly sounds like a last goodbye. Seek and Destroy. The back-to-back -back double whammy with this following Kill Bill at the beginning of the album took me out on first listen. And speaking of staple songs, we have Doves in the Wind. Cleverly unpacking the intricacies and even dangers of sex, of course we have Kendrick here with his masterful wordplay. That is one thing about him as an artist though, the lyricism is genius, but sometimes it's too much when I'm trying to have a casual listen. Especially here because of how much they mention this guy. I love the Red Man sample and the beat is one of her best. Broken Clocks. Sometimes I catch myself singing still love, still love randomly and only have scissors to thank for that. Kill Bill. I don't care how much y'all say how this song is overplayed to the ground, bro. This song is fi! And the Doja Cat remix is pretty good too. Let me know if y'all agree with me here. Is Kill Bill top 10 SZA or am I just being a homunculus? Awkward is phenomenal. It truly captures the feeling of uncertainty over the possible destruction of a relationship. This song is a good one to come back to often if you like good music. Normal Girl is yet another song from SZA that I can't relate to at all. It's the same thing when I'm listening to gangster rap or coke rap, like these lyrics couldn't be further from my experience, but I can still acknowledge how good the music is. I appreciate it as an art and the message it's preaching, and I can only imagine how better it is for other girls looking for normalcy in a relationship. Forgiveless. I know I said in my top albums of 2022 video that this was my favorite song off of SOS, but that has clearly changed since and this has been dethroned by another opponent who you will see mentioned very soon. The end part of special when it sounds like we're underwater like we just jumped straight into the album cover is incredible. Nobody Gets Me, Nobody gets me has some of SZA's best singing on it. There, I said it. Gone Girl is a great example of quality over quantity. SOS was definitely worth the wait. I'm so glad she took the time in between records to really cook up something magnificent. It's hard enough, you got to treat Drew Barrymore's cameo in the music video goes so absolutely hard. Good Days is such an easy pick for anyone, even including people who aren't huge fans of her work. It was such a toss-up for me between these top two picks, but I just had to give Good Days the second placement here. The first time I heard this song, I was walking outside in the sun, and it legitimately was such a euphoric feeling. This right here is a perfect example of why I love music. And for the number one track on this list, my favorite SZA song. Do you know what it is? I'm gonna keep stalling so you can have the chance to guess, but pause right now and then comment below what you think it is. It is... Ghost in the Machine. Here, SZA is expressing her feelings toward the music industry. It's really haunting and dark, but the main reason why I love it so much is because it has probably one of my favorite choruses ever. And that stocked on top of the Phoebe Bridgers part that puts me in a daze makes for my favorite SZA song. Well, that was my ranking of every single SZA song. What'd you guys think? Do you agree with most of what I said or are we on complete opposite sides of an argument? Let me know down in the comments below, but thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see you shortly in the next video. See ya.